In this video, we're going to look at the functional of this form here. i is the double integral of f of x, y. Now, z is a function of x and y. p is partial z by partial x, and q is partial z by partial y, all by dx by uh, dy. Now, this will be a, a bit easier understood if you look at it uh, in terms of the little drawing. So, if you have your ax axis system, now your x, your y, and your z now, what we're doing is we're extending the simple functional to uh, two independent variables. So now instead of having an extremal, which is a, a line, the extremal is actually going to be a curve. So the point P there would lie on that extremal curve. Now, in order to add a variation into that, we do the same as we did previously. In a one dimensional case, um, we would add a variation in uh, epsilon e to x. But now uh, we've got a function of two variables, so we've got to add a function in epsilon eta xy. Okay, so in effect, this eta um, x and y is a surface here whose values uh, eta x and y equal zero uh, at the, uh, around the boundary. So the actual boundary eta x and y sits on this xy plane, and the rest of it creates some sort of surface. And the epsilon value there makes a family of surfaces. So we take this um, eta x of y, eta x of y times epsilon, and we add it on to our extremal s of x and y. We get this whole new surface here, uh, up here called z. Okay, so that's the new surface there. And you can see then as the epsilon tends towards zero, this surface here tends towards the extremal surface um, s of x, y. So now we'll get through the same process we did with um, our uh, previous video. We're looking at the um, a little variation here. So we're looking at the, the new surface minus the old surface. Now, in order to get the new surface, what we have to do is we have to um, vary the value of z. Now, we vary the value of z. We've seen there simply by adding our, um, our s plus our epsilon eta, where s is a function of x and y, and eta is a function of x and y as well. But how do we vary the value of p? Now, the value of p is partial z by partial x. So in order to vary that value p, we just add on our epsilon, but it's no longer epsilon times our eta, it's epsilon times the, the differential of eta with respect to x, as this is the differential of uh, z with respect to x here. Okay, now we do the same thing for our q. The q becomes epsilon times d, eta by dy. Okay, so that's a little bit new when we uh, add on the variations in this form. So, what we're going to do then is we're going to take the, the Taylor approximation of this for the, the first um, order. So the first order is going to be epsilon times the double integral of the, um, the partial f by partial epsilon. So we're differentiating that with respect to epsilon. Okay. So in order to differentiate that respect to epsilon, we split it into three. We can, this x has no function of on epsilon, y has got no function of epsilon, but uh, this term here, z, has got a function of epsilon, and that's got a function of epsilon, so is that. So we've got three terms there that are functions of epsilon. Now, what you have to note as well, uh, as seen in the previous videos, that if we are multiplying uh, f with respect to um, epsilon, well, actually, f is going to be a function of z, and then z in turn is going to be a function of uh, epsilon. So we've got to differentiate f with respect to z, and then it's dz by d epsilon. So we'll just go through and do that. So partial f by partial z times d by d epsilon of z. Well, z is just our s plus epsilon eta. And we've seen in the previous video, uh, that's going to give us three terms. So we differentiate s with respect to epsilon. Well, s is a function of x and y, not a function of epsilon. So that disappears. If we differentiate epsilon with respect to epsilon, we get 1 times the eta. And if we 
differentiate the eta of x with respect to epsilon, well that's just going to give us zero as well. Okay, so we're just going to be left with one term from this differential, which is the eta. And then we multiply that by partial f by partial z. So we've got partial f by partial z times eta. So that's the first term uh, being differentiated. Now we've got to look at the second term, a little bit more involved. So just take our time, we'll work our way through it. Now I've added in this a kind of dummy variable, um, k, because up here we said that z equals this s plus epsilon eta. So what we'll do is we'll, we'll call this whole term here k. Okay, so k is the p plus epsilon d eta by dx. So in order to differentiate the function with respect to um, epsilon, we've got to differentiate the function with respect to this, which is k, and then differentiate k with respect to epsilon. So that's just what we've done there. Now what we'll do is we'll leave the partial f by partial k times d k by d epsilon. Well, what is k? Well, k is our p plus epsilon d eta by dx. So then we've got our partial f by partial k times d by d epsilon of, now what is this thing p? Well, our p there is just our partial z by partial x, or, or partial z by partial x, but what is um, partial z, what is z? I mean z um, is our s plus epsilon eta. So you're just going to be left with our d by dx of s plus epsilon eta. And then what you're going to be left with the rest of it is just going to be our epsilon d eta by dx from here. Okay, so I've just written that out in, in full. So when we go and do these differentiations, we're going to have partial f by partial k, uh, d by d epsilon. Now, and if, when we differentiate this thing out here, well, our s is, uh, is a function of x and y, so when we differentiate that, we've just got uh, ds by dx, so we have our ds by dx term here. Now, whenever we differentiate this here, uh, epsilon eta with respect to x, well, um, our value, um, we'll have our uh, d epsilon by dx, okay, times the value of eta, and then we differentiate the other way, the other one, so it's just a product rule, we differentiate d eta by dx times epsilon, okay, so that one term there splits into um, these two. So it's just a, the product rule for differentiation. So what we're left with is partial f by partial k of our d by uh, our, uh, well, when we look at this term here, we've got partial f by partial k. Now, whenever we differentiate this term here with respect to epsilon, well, s is a function of x and y. It's not a function of epsilon. So that whole term just disappears, okay? Now, when we look at this term here, well, this value, um, eta, is not going to be um, a, a, a function of epsilon, okay? Um, so whenever we differentiate that there, uh, that part of that term is going to disappear, okay? And again, whenever we differentiate um, this uh, this epsilon with respect to x, well, we differentiate epsilon with respect to x. Um, epsilon is not a function of x, it's just the, the number that we choose, okay? So that whole term there is just going to um, disappear as well. So the only thing you're going to be left with in the end is this, uh, is the end term here, okay? So you're going to have our um, d epsilon by d epsilon, which is just going to be a value of 1 times the d eta by dx, okay? So you're just going to be left with um, this term here and the d epsilon by d epsilon is just going to give you a value of 1, okay? So it just means you're going to be left with the partial f by partial k times d eta by dx. Okay, now it's exactly the same in this uh, one here as well. And the only difference here is that we've now added in this other dummy variable and we'll call this whole lot here, we'll call m, okay? So we're going to have our partial f by partial m times dm by d epsilon. 
Now, it's the exact same um, process for this one as the, the one above. The only difference is that there's a, a term in Y, which is uh, rather than a term in X. So you can have a look and compare this one to that one up there. But whenever you work through that whole thing there, uh, you're just going to be left with partial F by partial M uh, d eta by dy as opposed to d eta by dx. So that's the, the three terms there. So we'll take the three terms and we'll stick them into the original equation. So the original equation is going to be epsilon double integral of eta partial f by partial z plus d eta by dx partial f by partial k plus d eta by dy partial f by partial m dx dy plus all the higher order values. But we know there, as that epsilon tends towards zero, then the value of z will just tend towards s, the value of k will just tend towards p, and the value of m will tend towards q. Now you can see that quite easily if you head up to the line up here. So as that epsilon tends towards zero, then the, the value of z in this instance here, you can see in that line, is if, if is, uh, epsilon tends towards zero, then that z just tends towards the value of x. Okay. Now the same thing occurs um, for these as well. Um, as epsilon tends towards zero, the value of k will just be left with uh, the value p, and the value m will just tend towards the value q. So that's those variables in effect, dummy variables I've added in just disappeared. So now what you're left with is double integral of eta partial f by partial s plus d eta by dx partial f by partial p plus d eta by dy partial f by partial q dx by dy and all of that would have to equal zero in order to, for it to be um, a, a extremal. Okay. So now what we're going to have to do then is uh, we've got to try and use the, uh, we would previously have used the integration by parts in order to separate out um, the eta and getting rid of the d eta by dx and the eta by dy and pull out the brackets and then use the fundamental lemma in order to um, work out the differential equation which gives us an extremal. But we can't really do that here because we'd have to use integration by parts uh, for a function of two variables. Um, but what we'll do is in the next video we're going to go and we're going to look at a way of solving this using something called the Cauchy integral theorem. So We'll go and prove the Cauchy integral theorem and then in the video after that we'll use that in order to find the solution to our, our problem. Okay, so thank you for listening and goodbye.